Okay, my friends. So today I will continue the idea of dimensionality reduction. And somehow I will return to my first lecture about the notion this is Oh, of course. Data set is a finite set. Oh, thank you. Data set is a finite set. And strictly speaking, dimensionality is zero. Moreover, if you look from a large distance, it is zero. It's like small lamp. If you look from the close distance, it's also the discrete set, that no question. But then some, if you look from different distances of different level of magnification, you will see that it will change your change the what happened. So today I will I will discuss the notion of dimensionality reduction this without specific mostly without specification which dimensionality I have in mind. But, okay, 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 okay. So, my plan, I usually start from the plan, is the problem, approximation of multidimensional data by low dimensional objects, elastic manifolds, Comparison of this classical linear PCA, pluriharmonic graph embedment. This is the central. Then topological grammars. It's my favorite invention. And then examples and some and some examples from uh, medical biophysics, cancer, I don't genomics and some other. Areas, but huh? by informatics around. We have many because this is very applied work. It was uh, created by request of bioinformatics. It is by and widely used in several large bioinformatic institutions with many. Uh, I will explain later, especially uh, in very new single cell omics bioinformatics. I will return to this topic at this place. Okay, the problem. Oh, the idea, the idea that we should approximate data by low dimensional objects and we can do it effectively, constructively, constructively also by Carl, introduced by Carl Pearson. Carl Pearson, uh, in many physical, statistical, and biological investigations, it is desirable to represent a system of points in plane three of higher dimensional space by the best fitting straight line or plane. This is the definition of principal component analysis. Everything else is just game around. And the idea of Pearson was approximation. It's not the same, no, so high, there are many forms, many consequences, but this is the main idea. And this thing he told that, this is a picture from his paper. And this is a principal component analysis. This is the book of Jerry, very useful book, but Jerry forgot about the original, definition and use it maximal variance definition, which is very bad. Of course, it's equivalent in linear case, but it's very difficult to generalize. But approximation is very easy to, idea of approximation is very easy to extend to nonlinear case situations. Idea of maximal variance, I don't know how to extend to the, huh? Yeah, but this is, you know, this is Pythagoras theorem, because if you minimize 
uh, these distances and the hypotenuse is the same, you should maximize <laughs> this distance along. This is just nothing more. But my, this is, and for physicists, the very useful idea is this minimal energy. You just use sliding end here on the line, use the springs attached to the data points, and leave it relax. After relaxation, it will be first principle axis. It is very useful metaphor, and we use it. For formalization, we'll use it first. And the idea of principal objects with mean square error minimization is this. We can take any type of object. Here is Bismarck, just for a joke. I think that I hope that nobody will be insulted by this guy, respect the Bismarck. So this is uh, the green points are data. We calculate distances from data to the approximant. Then they find the position of approximant that minimizes the sum of square distances. Of course, position may include just motion. It may include some uh, distortion, uh, bending, stretching, and so on. It depends on your fantasy and your algorithm and your task. But then the projection of the data points on the approximate is a model of data that we use further. No, like we use in principal component analysis, we take the plane, project data, and look then on these projections. You can look on this Bismarck monument with this, oh, these are data. Okay, okay. So, the principal component analysis is too rigid because linear case, the planes, lines, planes, and higher linear manifolds are very rigid. There is an opposite, absolutely flexible. And then there is all, even sometimes it's classification, the people of methods, they call this principal points. It's also a rather old method. It was considered as the first method of clustering in the history. K-means. But K-means is exactly the same as K principal uh, components. But the difference is that instead of line and place, we can use again a finite set. We approximate one finite set with a smaller finite set. That's all. In this sentence, we approximate a finite set by a smaller finite set is a, everything about k-means. Yes, yes, mean square, yes. Yes, yes, no, this is, this is different. Yes, uh, there's a difference but because principal component analysis is simple, but here is essentially, that, that is quadratic. Here is essentially non-quadratic stage because redistribution of points between centers. These are centers, and these are data points. And change of owner, this center owns this point, this is very non-linear operation very non-quadratic operation. But if we fix owners, after that there's quadratic minimization, but iterative method, in PCA iterative methods always gives you the global Mac minimum. Here the iterative methods gives you local minimum because this is not convex. Because this uh, operation, recharging or redistribution. But there are many tools how to create good approximation with restarting with some good heuristics of initial approximation. I will not tell you more. Everybody who pretends to be data scientist, natural intelligence, 
must know PCA and K means with all the details. I, it's not my function to teach. Above, I can assume that you are very clever and you know everything about that. But I should say, if you start to any program, any project to teach, this is like two plus two. It's a, you cannot work with data analysis be, be, without this too simple. First, therefore, I give this, uh, no, this uh, select centers, attach the points, minimize energy, and then repeat until converge. Oh, it converges in finite number of steps for as a good local menu. If you like global menu, reiterate, use many heuristics, special task. But between very super flexible approximation by finite sets and super rigid approximation by plane planes, there exists very old idea of what? Of splines. These are splines. Splines are used for many, for many hundreds of years. Uh, and people created ships and draw this uh, models, prepare models, they use splines to connect points. The splines was just a flexible, like metallic ruler. Here, this is. And these are splines. Of course, the idea of splines is used then in approximation theory, but this is a the same metallic ruler as people used it several hundred years ago for um, no, this for for ship for modeling spline. But instead of because we you work not with the physical bending physical rule, we work with computer. We prefer to start immediate with finite grid with finite set, but like K means. But this finite set of centers will be connected by springs. We will have not only springs from our data points to centers, but there will be also springs between centers. And this, huh? Yes, but these springs can be not only positive, but also negative to model bending effect. You see here, black are contraction and red are repulsion. Yes, and the same, it, was, it will be quadratic functional of energy. And after that, just use splitting algorithms. The splitting algorithm means Generate some centers, find the closest data point, not centers with connections, minimize quadratic energy with this association between points and centers. It's quadratic function. Then you see the closest centers will change, maybe. Reattach points to the closest centers and iterate. Convergence and finite number of steps. Easy theorems, good exercise. But no. definition, but we'll use not general, absolutely general number of springs. We'll use three types of springs. First, energy of approximation. Three types of elastic energy. Energy of stretching and energy of bending. What means stretching? You have just edges and oh yeah, two nodes are connected by spring and this lambda is modular, this square. What is bending? It's more interesting. We have the, the center, this is there. 
note and two neighbor notes. We use step left, step right in some sense in this element. And square, when the stretching energy is zero, the stretching energy is zero no, when these two centers coincide. And then there is attraction. When the bending energy is zero, when the central node is the average of not, not the zero is the average between node one and node two. This is a bending. This is exact. And the minimization of energy is this. Oh, sorry. Minimization of energy is this. Again, you have some approximation. Attach the data to the closest centers. Minimize quadratic functional. And, and iterate. Convergence in finite number of steps. I see. So, yes, yes. Uh, e, e is a, it's, sorry. This is just notation. Yeah, we have two centers. Let us call these two centers in the system. Let us, two specific centers. Let, let us call these two centers like E1 and E2. For these two centers, we imagine there is some coefficient and square distance between them. That's why, right. yes, yes. This is for three centers, and this is H, this is the rib. How edges and ribs are distributed among the net is a much more interesting question. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. So there's two questions. This is just about elementary, elementary elements. Elementary elements are data points and Ys. These are two Ys. These are the three Ys, but not every three are connected. And not every two are connected. Okay. So assembly can have elastic net. We can assemble elastic net in a special space, not in the data space. We can imagine, what do you like? Do you like a curve? Do you like a manifold 2D, like oh, yes, bending 2D, or 3D maybe bending after all, maybe a sphere, we assemble maybe this sort of triangle, maybe a torus, maybe a hemisphere, and so on. You assemble a network on its own space of principality. Then you create, then you have well, various topologies, maybe. Here, for example, these are election of American presidents. <laughs> a globe of <laughs> just maybe many various topo. Then there is, sorry, then, then there is a question about embedding this, embedding this network into this data space. There is initial embedding. How we calculate initial embedding? For reproducibility, Purposes is the best idea is to use principal component analysis. Or if you have some idea that should be a sphere or should be, you should select as usually a random initiation also works. But uh, the main problem with random uh, initiation is 
not the complexity of calculation, but represents every time it will be different, so slightly different result. Therefore, usually we start as very funny result. We start from small net and then grows <laughs> so small soft net, and then it grows, and then we make stretching energy lower, stretching coefficients lower, lower and lower, uh, lower and then higher, higher and higher. And this attracts to data very big fast. This various topologies, and just an example. Then how to use? You remember that we uh, show our data on the jacket of Bismarck. We can show all our data on the map. It's elastic map. We can show data. Not, but not only, we can visualize any function. For example, you have, for example, you have 10 dimensional space. Of course, after you use two dimensional manifolds, it's like it is embedded somehow into 10 dimensional space, but you cannot see how. By each coordinate becomes a function on the embedded on, on the manifold. No, in projection. We find projections. No, this, we, know, we know this function, we know this function. And each x, for example, each x is a function. Each function of x, it's also a function. Density, point density is also a function. And everything can be, and for this purpose we use, we utilize um, geographic information system. Very, very useful technology. We just use for this gift, for this elastic, we just, no like in geeses is, in geographic information systems, you have various types of objects, you have very functions like temperature, high. You, when you look on the geographic map, you see from depths of ocean, height of mountains. So this is like this. Very, I should say that sometimes it's useful. There may be special lecture about this system and uh, maps, geographic information systems for data. And then, one more, maybe a bit premature, because I should say that it's very important. I just see this idea, visualization of uncertainty. Because when you, it's usually for all data approximation methods, you should somehow evaluate and visualize uncertainty of this method. Even for principal components, for principal manifolds, and further, you should take, you know, there are two types until high uncertainty. First, of course, if a point is just coincides with this projection, there is no uncertainty, the point is there. But there are two sources of uncertainty. The points are not on, on the plane, not on the objects, they are some, somehow far. The first toil, high uncertainty, and maybe different, maybe high uncertainty because maybe vacuum, may, may, maybe on the plane, on the approximate, there is maybe areas without projection. And if you like to extend the function, like uh, temperature, I don't know what you like. On the whole space, you need to use closest points like and closest KNN regression here. But here will be large distances to the closest points, and therefore it will be significantly uncertain prediction. Was how we use this? Why we need this representation? I assume that we have a new data point here. Bam, we put it on our map. If it is here, and it's no problem. We have many points, not very large distance. We say, oh, more, more or less for sure, we can expect that it will be the same as other projections. And we can 
somehow average projects and predict the property of this new data point. But what to do if the data point is here? We can say, oh, no, we have some points from here and some points from here, but this will be high uncertainty. Therefore, together with the map, we should have a map of uncertainty. <coughs> well, for example, here, for real systems, there's for, for real prediction, economic prediction, there are data, there's are fields, and there are fields of uncertainty. Just for illustration, how it looks like. Uh, then is a question again, slightly premature, but again, I should demonstrate how to compare different methods of dimensionality reduction. How we should say that one method is better than the other methods. There are many metrics, and this will take four of them. Well, for example, here. 2D elastic maps, this is for breast cancer genomics, this is for bladder cancer genomics. And uh, here, uh, just for all human tissues, gene activities for all, for the whole human. Then I should say, how to compare? Oh yes, approximation, yes, of course. How now manifold, how our approximates data. But of course, it's better than PCA because it's flexible. No miracle, nothing to speak of, but we should tick this box. Yes, better approximation. Yes. Then better, less obvious, better representation of large distances. Of course, small distances, are distributed somehow, it is unpredictable, but large distances should be represented much better. And this we see that two dimensional, uh, two dimensional elastic map works like five dimensional principal component. Oh, the whole space is huge, but we should say that no, this is not too bad. For breast cancer, like five, like five for bladder cancer. And for normal tissues, no, like between four, four or five principal components, just 2D. And this is not so obvious. But you know, this is largest distance, second distance, third distance. Point and to rush presentation, the closest. Close group of points should be transformed to the close group of points. The neighbors, nearest neighbor structure should be should be violated too much. It's one more criteria. Of course, it's calculated somehow. I don't invite you to calculate this. Uh, no, this is just a number of the number of nearest neighbors is the intersection between two, <laughs> old and new. But this is the numerical. And uh, class compactness is very interesting. Uh, from scratch, we don't know any classes. This is unsupervised. But now we work with cancer, non-cancer, uh, tissues, um, brain, leg, and so on, B muscle. The idea is that classes should be compact. Not in the sense of Brahmerman, but we, it will be nice it's, if our classes that we should work with are closely represented in the method. It is our luck because it's nobody promised us that this method will be better than that method. But we can check in this problem area and in this problem area it works better. But you see, not for tested for many 
database. And this is not trivial. For some databases, it's very bad, very bad, much better. For some databases, it's not so much better. But of course, this Elastic Maps is better. Uh, yeah, this is special publication. This is, and of course, this is again calculation of criteria. You can invite, invent it by yourself. It's just exercise. But then we should say, go oh, why? Manifold structure. Does anybody promise it us that the data set will have no gaps, no empty space, no, this, it will have topology of Euclidean space, which is manifold. This topology locally is Euclidean space, but embedded into, embedded into, no, in the attribute space. Nobody promised us. Therefore, let us ask ourselves, what can we do? We can. We can, especially when we work with genomics, we work with so huge dimensional data. It's obviously, there may be branching points. There may be some strange topology like loops and so on with holes. And we need new technology. And if uh, for elastic maps, the idle approximation was plain and minimization of quadratic energy was, uh, what, what, what is minimization of quadratic energy? It is, yes, it's a, how say, planification. <laughs> No, we create a, a, something flat. When we, we define minimize the bending energy, it means that you go to the flat object. And again, if you start from the very strong bending model, it will be a principal component, then relax, it will be more flexible, more flexible. That is a principal graph embedding. This is embedding of the principal manifold, but maybe you can go for principal graph. What the, the most main question is, what is the idle object, pluriharmonic object graph? First of all, we select stars. In a graph, we, of course, we can have many stars in topological graphs. We select some of them. Then we say they will punish in embedding. We say that this harmonic graph, harmonic embedding of a star is embedding when the central point is the middle, what's the average of the ends. The difference between the central point and the average of ends is, what is it? Is Laplace operator on graph. This is, and then, okay, the square of Laplace operator will be, but because we select some stars, it will not just be harmonic, it will be so-called pluriharmonic when we select some stars and so. So what's the principle of pluriharmonic graph and graph embedment? Elastic case star. Elastic case star is that. The branching energy is, as I told you. Elastic energy is zero when this star is harmonic. Oh, yeah, sorry. It's my ping is. So, what does it mean? It means that the in the elastic case star, the center is attract, attached to the edges, to the ends, by attractive springs, and the ends are 
connected by repulsive springs. All together gives this formal. Ah, huh? sorry, I don't hear. Ah, ah, mu is, a, is the elastic modulus, the modulus of bending. Yes, mu and k, of course, for each k, we should have its own elastic modulus. At least, not not for each star, but we, at least for each k. And there is special. There are special rules how to uh, select mu k if you don't have anything original in mind. So primitive elastic graph is a graph of all non-terminal nodes with k h are elastic k stars. Well, this is just the simplest version. Again, this is energy and purely harmonic. Of course, elastic manifolds are inside. Because you can take a square, take this selected ribs are two stars and no other stars. All ribs are two stars or three. And this also it will be elastic pluriharmonic graph. So pluriharmonic graph, again, uh, solution is the same. Attach uh, data to the nodes, minimize quadratic energy, and iterate. It's a very fast algorithm. But the main question is, where should we take graph? Because the world of graphs is much bigger than the world of mm, manifolds. At least locally, all manifolds of the same dimensions are practically the same. The question is, I, we will create graph step by step from one edge or even from one node. But not all the extension operation will be allowed. We will select a graph grammar. We will use a grammatic approach. We'll use elementary transforms and create new graphs step by step. And each step will be, we found the best graph with minimal energy, say, oh, I, I'm not happy with this approximation. Let me add a note. How can I add? Let me take all the oh, grammar, apply, minimize, and go ahead. Very grab gamma. For them, grow simplest growing grammar. Add a node to a star, operation one, operation two, bisect an H. Here is grow the A, operation one, operation two, operation three, and so on. And then select. Then, because after this topological transformation, we will make optimization, we select the best energy. Of course, some, this is some. No, no, better, and then continue. Of course, sometimes it's very useful to use not only growing, but to use also shrinking grammars. This is how it works. And this is my telephone. How it works. I should say that it does not know that this is a tree. It doesn't know anything. It's just a two example. And this is uh, the example why it's better, because this triple point cannot be well approximated 
kan be, 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 linje pisje, non linje pisje bi ono i branchen pisje zet taj. And this is the formal, this exam formal first talk. Talk, I like it. Oh, almost 10 years ago. Um, in some absolutely rigorous sense, this is a gradient descent. In the space of graphs, by this, where yeah, gradient is defined by grammar, possible directions. And uh, for principle three, we have two grammars, growing grammar and uh, pruning grammar. And I think that for most tasks, you need, for the beginning, you need also this. Of course, we use more grammars, but for most tasks, you need these two grammars are sufficient. Why we need pruning? Sometimes after several steps, uh, several steps of growing, we need to slightly change, to change slightly the system and to go to pruning. Because there will be several steps of growing, then several steps of pruning. Several steps of growing, several steps of pruning. The result will be better. Grammar is, so there are usually there are two spaces. When you always, when you create this sort of the space of shapes, even when you approximate this by PCA, you have line, plane, three dimensional space. When you use manifold, they use the yes, uh, uh, space of grids. Here we have space of graphs. And there is embedding. This is grammar works in the space of shapes, it adds, it transforms graph. Graph grammar is a notion well developed for software development, for software development. It's very well developed notions of, huh? Yes, it's well, well, well developed, the people use it. And we are happy to work with one classic graph grammar, Reiko Heckel, in our one friends. But this is the idea. Oh, this is implementation is on GitHub. Of course, seeding the initial structure, generating the topologies, final graph structure. So, elastic principle graph energy, graph grammars, and so on, the final structure. Yes? Yes, because, because we use pruning grammar. You see, this is a special, I apologize, this, it is very important to use two types of grammars as steps of the growing steps of pruning. This one type, it will be easier, but if you choose one type, you will just go down. Uh, that. And the key is green steps, steps up, steps I are pruning, steps down are growing. And this is because in this we have one algorithm that includes both pruning and growing. It starts from growing. Here, perhaps, here it is. You see, oh, sorry. Here you see step growing, growing, growing. Pruning, growing, pruning, growing, growing. <laughs> uh, it, no. Graph grammar you can apply up to infinity. This is, I will say a couple of first, a little bit later. Therefore, yes, minimization of energy converges. If you fix a top topology for given, then I postponed two slides. I will just 
complete scheme. One is with he H, then three, then four, then five. Why did you have to go to the uh, growth and pruning? Uh, selection is between growing and pruning. Ah, no, because there's no way to point five in, 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 in these two examples. Because minimization of energy leads us down, and sometimes it's more, more clever to go up and then again down. There are criteria how to select, how to. Here is no pruning. Yes, but this is for one grammar. But here is extended grammar, two grammars, more operations. You see, Ivan. If you have no problem, you can go down, down, down somehow and just see. Uh, block five. No, because sometimes it's slightly paradoxical. Sometimes, uh, if you go from this block five or from this here, yes, it may be not the best. But you said that the energy is decreasing. It may be not the best in this from this way. All right. This uh, because you see there is a question. There is no global minimum. This is just practical, just go up and down. This is. Okay, so it's like stochastic gradient. Like stochastic gradient, exactly. You found what we need. Okay, and then we should go ahead. Maybe, maybe later, because. Okay, this is uh, how it works in the real life. And then one more technical trick. When I tell about. Quadratic function, I cheat a bit. Because quadratic function is not very good. Because it has global version with long range interaction. And if you like to have robust results, I should not allow this noise, wide noise, but not very intensive, destroy my picture. Therefore, instead of quadratic, I choose this. Or even that. Miracle, this is again piece quadratic functional. This is returns to the quadratic functional minimization. Huh? No, just quadratic function. Yes, a cut off, but this is all minimization, so quadratic. Yes, yes, it is linear. Problem. Near miracle we return this to me. Therefore, we in our software very Mac usually use this trimming <laughs> functionals. Trimming. Oh, this is advanced, but oh, for general purposes. So some areas of application. If you study data mining, you know what this picture. Now, the picture is this name, Iris, Fisher example of uh, classification. You can see that unsupervising application of these topological grammars leads to the best result. Different sort of irises are trivially separated. The size of the, of course, node is just the number of examples inside. And this is 
and though in a small fraction I mix it. This is, and this is much better than anything. It was surprising. surprising. We don't, we didn't expect so good result, to be honest. Those classical tests, we started the first test. Then cosmic web, galaxies, very interesting research. It's very interesting. Indeed, this is a web. Then this is Iris data set, how it works. And this is genome structure. Genome structure, wow. bacterial genome. We have a couple of words about it. Ah, the question is about what's about stop. You ask. There is three, there are three types of complexity. Geometric complexity. It's measured by elastic energy. Structural complexity is measured by uh, elements, how many branching points, how many points, and so on. And construction complexity, how many operations. And there is a weighted sum of this complexity, and this is a stopping rule. Because formally, you can go up to spanning trees, and approximately, your graph will include all your data points. If you if you allow it to grow into infinity, you just select bounded complexity. There are examples. <coughs> Robustness. Downsampling, it works. 300 points, 50 points, and huge noise. And even much stronger when my eye, I cannot find anything, but this system finds. Then non-tree-like topologies, like this, no problem. Uniform background noise, uniform. And this is very interesting. Intersecting manifolds clustering. If you have intersecting manifolds, you can discover not not all this, but with high probability, just this sort of structures. And the resolving structures in high dimension. Sometimes you see this. This is this. Data set has huge component orthogonal to first principal components, invisible. Of course, it's metromap in 2D, and this is in, in 100 d when it's discovered all these tails on the high dimensional tails and attached it to this metromap. It's three types of complexity. And then several examples, oh, the DNA. To, uh, to apply this data reduction to DNA, we should cut DNA into fragments, oh, like, then put fragments into RN, create PCA plot, and, or something else. This is examples of what we receive at the end. This bacterial genome, here, space of 400, 400 nucleotide fragments. This is P3 D PCA. This is Metromap, and this is how the algorithm works, how the growing tree works. This is growing, growing, oops. Result. <laughs> oh, result, of course, uh, uh, this is uh, represented in 3D PC. Much of it, just to see it. This is, this is a man. You see, this is a man. 
all tissues. This was a poch of uh, DNA chips, a fraction of cells, uh, and the uh, average activity of gene from for each gene from, from each tissue. This is a high dimensional. This head, brain, kidney, parathyroid, spleen, colon, well, everything covers the pancreas, pericardium, and so on and so on. This is, and the distance between gene activity can be calculated by the distance from the gene. Well, this is some sort, maybe just for. And this is gen genealogy tree, absolutely useless. Just for come. Uh, distance, distance, the same. Distance can be calculated. Uh, we have activity of genes, vectors. We, we mm, put this data on the tree. Then we should say that the, of course, Euclidean distance. Uh, or Hamming distance is invisible, but we can approximate Hamming distance by this distance along the tree. Of course, it's not exactly the same, but it's very clear to see that uh, seminal and prostate are very close, for example, without any doubt, without any. And thyroid is the same. And no, we can see liver, thyroid, kidney, parathyroid, spleen, colon, and so on. Then there are many more, there are many more terribly more important examples. Trajectory trajectories, clinical recalls, disease trajectories, via video my microscopy, single cell omics, a sequence of cell states in high dimensional space. This is Typical data trajectory with cell based interceptive medicine. No, that's typical what people were doing. No, they to tell that the healthy cells follow this trajectory in their life. They claim this. I don't know. No. Cell based. Interceptive. He is health trajectory and he is bifurcation. Uh, and he is diachronic on your data. Observed trajectories. Very difficult. And synchronic snapshot data much cheaper and usual, but can we derive trajectories from that? And here we found, not we, it's dramatic history. Uh, this software was on GitHub. At the same time, new technology, uh, single cell omics was invented. This is fantastic technology. I still don't understand how they work. What was uh, genetic chips? We take, for example, from my mask, we'll take some thousands of cells put on the chip and measure average activity on matrix RNA, measure activity of matrix RNA for each gene, average. And so in my muscle, they, they saw, and in my brain is different, in my liver is different. So now they take an organism, take five, 50,000 cells, as many genes as there are, and measure the activity of each gene in each cell. This is fantastic technology. And the first was absolute aphoria from that. The second was what to do. How can we utilize this data? See, we know for which, for example, we know that cells travel through long trajectories with bifurcations and so on. But how to find 
these trajectories. Because if we measure one cell, we cannot see it was killed. <laughs> we cannot measure it again. That is, um, and they, these people in Harvard, they are close to, you know, not exactly this, because there are many teams. The team from Harvard, this was very close to the source of this data, found on GitHub our software, applied, it was absolutely happy that this, at that time that they found, not me. This is the best software for this purpose. When they create a principal tree, that is what they, they need, they decided. After that, they invited several postdocs from China, from MIT, and so on. These postdocs very quickly draw, prepared this uh, good interface between our computation part and their data. And this new software stream was published in three months and the paper was sent to Nature in three months. They included us, of course, they are very good boys. And Nature told this is a software and published in Nature Code, no, published in Nature Code. But it's my pleasure, this is, so this is single cell data. And these are trajectories, because these are trajectories extracted for single cell data. It's not a miracle, it's not a very clear trajectories without any thickness, they are thick trajectories, of course, but they are already trajectories, not just a senseless cloud. Albergante et all, it means Albergante, Titizinovi, Titigarban. Huge. Okay. And another problem that we solve, that is, we are proud. First, we are proud this is single cell. Another is so called dynamic fin fin phenotyping. You know that phenotypes, are each disease has its phenotype. There is, because in, the, in each, we have no asthma. We have many, many, many phenotypes of asthma. More, I should say, already Hippocrates knew that there is no, even one disease, this is a trajectory, not a state. Therefore, we can, and this trajectory can be forecasted. And this is exactly the, Clean Trajan, I propose to use Hippocrates, but they are not clinical trajectory analysis, not, they prefer, not this historical. And this is like cardio complication of infarction, this root node, and there are different trajectories and different outcomes, no complications, letal, cardio so and, and many other, not so pleasant. This was a good map for prediction, for analysis, and so on. That's all. Conclusion. Elastic maps. Good interactive software for constructing low dimensional nonlinear principal manifold. Principal manifold is a good screen for visualization. Pluriharmonic map graphs. A rich set of approximate. Topological grammar works because there are no other methods to navigate in this huge space of shapes to navigate, to create the sort of gradient descent in the space of graphs, we need grammars. We need an idea of elementary transform, elementary step. Well, Metroma, nice robust resolution tool, and it works. And it's online on GitHub. You are welcome to follow Harvard people. And please include us in your nature paper. <laughs> Don't forget. Thank you very much. Okay, questions, please. Yes, please. Thank you for 
for a brilliant lecture once again. Um, well, actually, you have already answered one of my questions. It was ab about uh, okay. It was about uh, representability of non-tree-like uh, data structures. But uh, I, I would just like to express a little curiosity. So, what what happens if we have uh, like like a cycle? Will it be like that? So, uh, just sure, just sure. one break so here. Grammar can this is this. Of course. There are many methods and many approaches beyond trees. Yeah. Programmer can include gluing. Cycles, right? Gluing, gluing, yeah, gluing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. There are many there are And if you expect that your data is not just a tree, not, not, not like a divergence, but maybe some convergence, even gluing. Grammars is a combination of the logic of grammars and simple logic of the subject. See, therefore, so this is, if this is possible and, more, and not a miracle in your data, you should say, oh, well, I include in my grammar gluing steps. It will create some difficulty, but it works and it's also in, included into the source. But it's not crucial, is it? I'm no, crucial. no, it's crucial, just, just some, some complication because you see. I would like to say that basically what you're doing here is like as a graph analog of string theory because you know string theory is exactly topology plus quadratic functional which yes, basically yes, but, makes uh, a string. That's, yeah, yeah, for embed and uh, regarding the, embed the embedding, I had the second question. Uh, so uh, when showing us the results of the nature paper, nature communications, nature communication, okay, nature, nature communications, nature. yeah. Um, you just showed uh, a graph of uh, those different genomes, which had a tree structure, yes. uh, and it was in 3D, embedded in 3D. Yes. So um, why 3D? Was it just intentional or is it, was it just because built I, by... Because I can... Yeah, because it's no, just clear to the eye. Too. I see. I see. Because but, the, but the data points in the network are like high dimensional. Yes, yes, I, yes. I, yes. I the, the problem is uh, there is a universal tool of visualization, MetroMap. Mm -hmm. You can project on MetroMap everything if, if you have a tree. For, no, for non-tree structures, not. But if you would like to see how it is embedded, you can say, oh, perhaps three principal components can give me a hint. Mm -hmm. Let me see how my graph, how it is embedded, into projection into 3D PC. Ah, so, so you basically take three highest uh, singular values, kind of that, right? Yes. And, and then, then project then, it onto this space. Yeah. And then even something with rotation and so on, uh -huh. you can just because it is better to see once <laughs> yeah. than to hear 10 times. <laughs> Sometimes just because that we visualize it's not 3D, it's 3D visualization. So it, thanks God it's not a black box, right? It needs our brains. It helps, I mean. Yes, yes, it helps, of course it helps. Cool. Thanks. Ask a question. So if I if I understand correct, so you uh, to <clears throat> in order to to construct and to build. Uh, some some tree uh, mm -hmm. among those you, you show yeah? uh, so we rely on some local neighborhood local neighborhoods of points yes so and uh, so if if we apply some grammars your grammars so so they rely on some local neighborhood of points of each points of data of point. each points of of data of initial data points and this uh, yes but not precisely mm -hmm. For them, I start from, a, from let, let me start from one point. I see it one point, it minimizes energy. Mm -hmm. It will be the mean point, the average point, <laughs> without any doubt. Mm -hmm. So-called Frisé mean. See this. Then I add one more. Because the, the only grammar operation can, able to, can I add for one point, just to add, add another point. I randomly see it and then 
the energy minimization will give me first print you know, something, a model of principal component lines with rather far nodes. Because all my data cloud should be approximated by two points. And these two points cannot be too close. And then the local environment, but the local in that sense means that the almost the whole size, size of the cloud. Hmm. But while the graph grows, the vicinity will shrink, contract. Okay, and, and so in any case, it, it, these algorithms are based on Euclidean distance in the initial space. Yes. Euclidean distance, maybe with some with some cut. Uh, yes, with cut, but Euclidean distance. Yeah? So the, the initial space is usually redundant. Yes, and uh, different uh, coordinates, different features can be quite. Mm -hmm. Uh, related, related in general sense, related. So maybe similar, similar, similar features of, of, of initial space. So when we calculate Euclidean distances, <coughs> it's questionable somehow. So, but in any case, we, we you, you rely on Euclidean distances, if you understand correctly. Yeah? No? No, sir. Let's list. I will answer. <coughs> you are right, but the question is not finished. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So we, I, we finalize your question. They will yes, answer. So, so uh, my question: it, it, <laughs> Am I correct? So, yes. Uh, ah, yes. No, yes, you are almost correct. Almost the same. That locally, even locally, not mm -hmm. because if we use stream it. Quadratic functionals, it is already not a Euclidean distance. Mm -hmm. If you use so called PCQ, PQSQ approximation, it can be very close to L1. So it is one. Here I use one parabola and horizontal line. But I could, here I use three parabolas, horizontal line. But even for this metric function, minimization will be. A bit more, a bit more a quadratic minimization. <coughs> Maybe two, three, two, three times, not more. Your function phi in this sense is what, what is the projection? Yes, yeah, so this is functions. This is so this is some transformation. Yes, yeah, so this is the what the distance is. Of course, originally. It was of Euclidean distance. After that, we understood that this is not enough. So this is because everything is in development. Mm -hmm. In first works, it was of Euclidean distance. Mm -hmm. After that, we decided that uh, the trim distance is better. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, uh, in time, this was uh, the same work. It was solved the, the, the whole problem of Mm. Subquadratic, quadratic, subquadratic approximation of any norm. And therefore, it will be so called, I forgot his name, uh, Finsler space. It will be so called Finsler space. Uh, Approximation of Finster space. Finster space means that instead, to, instead of a sphere, you have a polyhedra. You have even non-linear, non-linear, non, -linear, non quadratic norm. Not as well quadratic norm. You can have, you can have Finster space. Uh, we did not so. We solved this problem. It was sort of formal competition between several groups in published software, but for our purposes, really, we don't need anything more, just, just trim it, just this. But we have in mind, the example for various lasso meters and so on, this is already ready in software as well. So if I understand your question, you are reasonable, and the answer is yes. You said any uh, norm, but, but I think it also 
would generalize to quasi norm. I think you've you've you've, you've done that stuff, no? Yes. Yes, but not for any. It should be subquadratic. Right. It should be subquadratic. Yeah, yeah, because otherwise there will be this. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Subquadratic. No, so, but quasi norms means so usually people use subquadratic. No one would you use a super. Yes. Yes. So yes. L4 people don't use. Exactly. People use yes. Yes. L2 or below. Yes. For yes. L2 or below, below, we use we have everything we need. Yeah. And yeah. for higher distance, for, for higher, and for higher, it's not a, it's boring, but it's non quadratic. Non quadratic is. is it? Support the, the, the control of generalization ability of this, this matrix. Generalization ability so to, to prevent from overfitting. Uh, you see, this is unsupervised learning. In that sense, uh, generalization ability is. Uh, rather sophisticated idea for this. Yes. I, I mean that this tree, this structure can uh, be fitted to every point, maybe. To every uh, yes, 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 yes. And, and, and this would be too overfitted. Yes, 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 yes. But nobody. Sorry. I... Structure is robust to uniform beliefs. Yes, yes, yes. Could we explain maybe elaborate a little bit more on that part? Just should find. No, somewhere not very far from that. Oh, this one. Just use it another. I use it another direction. Yes, what this is what. The, in in our software, there are automatically two types for you know, for illustration and testing. Two types of noise. One type of noise is smearing, when one point is uh, changed to a cloud, small cloud, of points of different diameter. Another type is just adding of additional noise. What does it mean? If you add huge noise of this type, but uh, nevertheless, this local density increasing can be captured by this uh, principal graph method. And sometimes I, I made experiments for, for myself. I cannot see anything, it seems. Of course, there is some density increase, but not for my eye. And, the, and this is, each point is ex, supplemented by a cloud of some points. 50, like 10, 12, 100 points. This is also not too bad. Some other reasons behind it. Of course, it's because there is an internal structure. Okay. Yes. If there is no internal structure, it will do nothing. <laughs> so, uh, you can, of course, you can give it some noise. It will be something absolutely crazy. <laughs> or something absolutely trivial, like a straight line. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be just... If you don't like your system, you can give it okay. <laughs> such tasks. But if there is some hidden structure, it will work. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And about about supervise and supervise about I, I do I do I strictly speaking I don't know what do you mean. Where to stop? Where to stop? Uh, this is, oh, this even, uh, I will show you. Spe yes, yes, there's a special large paper about that. 
Mirkis and Zinoviev devoted to my 60th birthday published a huge paper about this question. I cannot, I know this, but I cannot answer in brief. They studied how the quality of approximation depends on the step of graph gram. And they found that there are some elbows on the way. And then and they told that uh, when to stop and they found some critical points and so on. This is uh, but uh, not, not for to, I apologize, not for today. But this, this is an elaborated problem. And even I should say, oh, my student, former oh, the professors, my former students made me such a gift <laughs> to answer your question. Well, I wanted to ask almost about that, if I understand, if yes, I understood please. you correctly. So um, I, uh, I wonder if on this uh, so like Kayle graph of, uh, of the grammar, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're just going across, adding some edges, then pruning them. Uh, yes, you may find yourself in some quicksand, if you will, or a pool where you will just drop into it. Oh, and I so, I mean, in other words, does this need annealing rather than just stochastic descent? Uh, this is the simplest answer is, one step, two step forwards, one step back. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Therefore, the total number of steps will increase. No, no cycles. Okay, but maybe there are some basins in this no, space. No, maybe. Never mind. It works. It works. It works. No, yeah, okay. I should say in, in, in most cases, just simple straightforward grammar, grammar of growth works. But sometimes it creates some artifacts, like small parasite uh, uh, leaves. Yeah. No, leaves, leaves, uh -huh. leaves. Leaves, okay. Uh, but this, uh, this combination prunes small parasites. Mm -hmm. This is. Yeah, because they are just attached to a single node yes, yes, and yes, maybe yes. just nearest neighbor. Yes. So there's no. Cut it off and throw yes. away. It cuts it. And therefore, it's, it's useful for that purpose. Yes. Because yes. by hands, it's a bit too boring, especially in high dimensional space. Yeah. Oh, yes, please. Two hands. Uh, so, uh, my questions uh, this is uh, dimensionality reduction, right? For to 2D or 3D. And for example, in PCA, we have uh, like variance explained uh, to somehow estimate how many information uh, did we lose. Uh, is there anything like this in, in this graph? Yes. Like Thank you. I'll show you. The approximation energy. No. This is. This is what we need. The mean square error. The only problem is all. I know this logic based on, oh, on fractional variance and explain it. Yeah, I should say that even for PC, it does not work. No, in simplest case, okay, okay, you can use it. But the problem of defining of uh, reduced dimension is you start from major or main components, go down, 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 and then the I stop. And there are several types of stopping. Uh, one of them is I need fractional variance to explain it 95%. Then, uh, then the boy will come to you 
and say, my dear professor, this is noise. This 95% includes 30% of noise. And you just approximate noise by your huge number of minor components and you should stop earlier. But you will answer, my dear, it will be, if I stop early, it will be not 95%, it will be 80 or 60%. If you answer, my dear professor, the life is not so easy. <laughs> therefore, uh, therefore, yes, there is that, this approach. Yes, sometimes you can use it. Of course, nobody will say, tell you that you made a mistake. Well, if you honestly test, tell that you use seven principal components because you need 90%, it's exactly gives 90%, why not? But this, you, you don't understand the real data dimensionality. Because if you have just noise, a cloud of random points, you will select, no, slightly, maybe slightly, this case, slightly elliptic to exclude complete degeneration. You will collect many, 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 many components and say, oh, this is 95%. Therefore, I have a very high dimensional problem. And then this boy will say, well, my dear, you have two components are significant and everything else is trash. Everything else is noise. And then it's up to you. You can say, ah, I maybe you uh, there's a axiom of data mining, not of probability theory, not of artificial. Somebody's noise is somebody's signal. It's your right to analyze noise. It's your right. And if you, maybe this is your signal. But all the rules is define dimensional through co principal components assume that the major components should be special rules, not considered the fractional variance explain it. I say like Kaiser rules, statistician like Kaiser rule. I don't like terrible rule, but they use it. It means that lambda is above average or above half average, you know, just to have some margin. This so called kinds, the rules are most frequently used in statistics, in factor analysis. Well, they say everything below half of average lambda is trash. It does, it, nobody should care about how much uh, fraction of variance you threw away. This is one approach. You propose another approach. I, well, I don't know what do you need to see your decision. But you should understand that you should be responsible for your decision. <laughs> okay? Did I? Oh, yes, yes, it's the first term, the main term. This, of course, we know always we control this. We control this in stopping criteria. When they answer the question, they anal we analyze how this uh, fraction of variance and explain it depends on the uh, uh, this number of graph grammar steps and so on. This is important question. I agree, but this cannot be a criterion. This is a difference. The question, of course, if you don't include this in the energy, we are, I never see, I, I'm not such an idiot. <laughs> so thank you. Okay. Uh, one question in that formula, the first formula, KI is what? KI, XJ is an element. You're summing along XJ element of KI. What is KI? KI, is a set. Data 
why I. You see, this is, of course, not a thing, not everything is good. AI is a system. Uh huh. As in K, it does not exist. Uh, data points that belong to this node. Uh -huh. This data points. This node is a closest node. Okay. The same for both sides. X that is Y is this set. K I. Uh -huh. well, because we have a range. Absolutely direct question because this uh, notation. Sorry, and for the second one, uh, you have S uh, vectors uh, E1, um, E11 one one and E10. So uh, two uh, S pairs of points. You have S, pa S pairs. Yeah, I, I use S pairs. Uh-huh. Each pair has two ends, mm -hmm. zero and one. Mm -hmm. This eight are numer numerated. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing good. Of course, it's like, because if you go as it is, there is nothing. So you lie on the. No, uh, so I'm saying to you, it's a good question. So there is nothing. As usual, probably. As usual. Yeah. Yes, yes. This is a possibility. But nobody knows how to. How, how, how. Yes. yes, yes. Nobody. Usually, it is needed when we have such or some multi scale. So, when we have a grid and a grid and a grid. Yes, yes, man. Yes, yes, we can think about it. We can think about that. But okay, so I think that some people are here just because they are polite. Therefore, maybe we can end. <laughs> but if you have questions, I'm here. Please continue. Inspired. Oh, yes, yes, please. For one more minute for your question. No, you see, I told you, each lecture is in some sense a small one semester model. For example, graph grammars and uh, principal graphs and manifolds is a few, I should say, not very dense one semester model. It's not just one lecture. But my goal today is not a scientific talk. In the sense, I don't Try to explain the most modern and the newest results. Because for explaining newest results, I should explain something behind it. I don't try to explain all the data, like in teaching modes. No, just something intermediate, like review lecture. Okay? Questions? Okay, if no one has questions, then I, I would like to ask a very practical question from my own experience in science. So let's say you we, we actually modeled uh, DNA, motion of DNA in some, in some solution, in some uh, solvent. And then we wanted to represent the vibrations of atoms in terms of several principal components. But in that case, for macromolecules, the typical situation is that you don't have a dominant principal component or two or three you basically have a kind of a so, continuous well many many can almost a continuous spectrum so the question is are these methods applicable to these situations you can't just embed it in 3d because there are many of them let's say 10 or more i should think about it 
I am not ready to answer this question. I mean, in fact, it's quite a typical so, situation. Yeah. And so for me, it's very interesting, interesting because I have works about uh, DNA uh, in the cells, and this Dijon and Joe, mm -hmm. uh, and then mm, molecular individualism and so on. Uh, Never heard about that. No, no. Dijon introduced it, the notion of that molecular... That Dijon, like uh, Bogolubo Dijon? Dijon, the classical of polymer physics. Ah, okay. Introduced the notion of polymer, uh, of uh, DN, so-called, molecular individual, we say that alone molecular, no ergodicity, because the dimension of phase space yeah. is so huge, doesn't have time, right? They just have no time for organicity. It was true. This was very interesting paper, a comment of Dijon to a nature paper of Joe for no Nobel Prize winner, for Nobel Prize winner, just for fresh Nobel Prize winner. And he introduced the notion of molecular individualism and uh, tells that I should demonstrate an hyperbolic flow they took the flow, this cell inflow, inflow, the hyperbolic flow. DNA jumps. Hyperbolic just on hyperbolic space or what? No, what hyperbolic flow means you have two inflows and two outflows. Ah, okay. It's just and a because topology. this is uh, yeah, like this is the tensor of flow will be hyperbolic. This is plus one minus one. I can write this that it will be very strange behavior. And he told that upside, he observed individual molecules. He told that the trajectory of individual molecules never repeats. It is dynamically true, he received Nobel Prize for that. And Dijen commented and invented the notion of molecular individuality. And you should read my paper about molecular individualism in physica. Huge, huge molly paper, Garbani Carlin about it. But I don't know, I, I never connect these methods to molecular individual. Yeah, I see, because this is more from data yeah, science. This, yeah. uh, yes, here we try to avoid this effect sure. rather than to model it. Yes, but, but I, what, why, I, why I asked this question is because in some on one hand, when you say, say make Raman spectroscopy and some spectroscopy and many other things, you can actually see those components for some systems. Yes, and yes. so it is widely applied to just extract the principal motions of the molecule. Or yes, just but for some... long molecules, no, especially. Yeah, too many of them. Yeah, too many, too many. No, but so, still, you know, there are so-called Bose peaks. That's why they are interested in them. So there are still... Yes, we can discuss it separately mm -hmm. because I don't think that... The, yes, uh, sorry, sorry. It's not uh, a seminar in physics anyway. Thanks. This is continuous mechanics and, and soft matter. Exactly. It's not the topic of my talk. Yeah, exactly. And I did not... We apply these methods for DNA surface, for DNA folding and so on, but not in, not in the flow. Thanks. Okay, questions? No? Thank you. The last question is can we uh, can we reveal just simple PCA from the as a, as a special case, as a simple special case from this uh, general problem statement? Yes, yes, yes. I, I, I started from that. Huh. So because this is a generalization of both PCE and K-means. So I started from that. <laughs> this is this is PCR. How can say PCA? PCA mm -hmm. means that the bending model is infinity, mm -hmm. oh, large. Mm -hmm. Stretching model is small, flexible. That's all. This PCA. No mm -hmm. bending. Ah, so no third no, row. No, just rigid. So no third row. Yes. Huh? The, the third row is eliminated. Yes. No. No. It's eliminated. dominating. Ah, dominating. Dominating. 
infinity. Infinity. Yes, no but, bending. Uh, mm -hmm. And moderate stretching. Mm -hmm. An approximation is not exactly per se, but very close. Mm -hmm. Very close. And uh, what about K means? K means, K -means, just, means just to find centroids. K means? Uh, K means just approximation energy. Nothing. Is it a special case? Yes, yes. K means is very simple. No, these terms zero and zero. No edges, no ribs. Mm -hmm. Zero and zero. That's all. That's the key. Mm -hmm. Of course, not two limit cases immediately. Yeah, mm -hmm. Yes, interesting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for your help. You're so kind.